At the end of 2019, I had everything I'd ever wanted as a filmmaker. I was living in Mexico City, working for huge clients like Netflix and National Geographic, and I had more work coming in than I could handle. I was working on crazy stories about all sorts of intense subject matter, and for a guy who started out 15 years ago wanting to be a war photographer, I thought I'd hit the professional jackpot. My main specialty during all this was filming with drug cartels, and because of the risk involved, I was able to charge a great day rate. Everything was going really well, until they tried to kill me. I'll tell you the full story of how all that happened in a minute, but trust me, it was very, very close. My camera and tripod took three bullets less than six inches from where I was standing, and three out of the seven people in the house with us were shot. Now, obviously I survived or I wouldn't be here making this video, but in that moment, when I thought I was about to die, I learned a few things about filmmaking and life that I'll never forget. And that's what I'm gonna share today. Six lessons about life as a documentary filmmaker I learned the hard way so that you don't have to. The last one literally changed the entire way I view this industry and my place in it. So let's get right into what I learned from four years of filming Narcos. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills and tricks I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. So at the end of 2019, I'd been living in Mexico for almost four years, and through a weird series of coincidences, I ended up becoming one of the go-to guys that international documentary crews would hire if they wanted to film with drug cartels. I covered everything from assassins to fentanyl cooks to loading $20 million worth of cocaine onto speedboats in the middle of the night. I didn't exactly plan for this to happen, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't think the work was pretty exciting. I was seeing things that most people never would, and I had crazier work stories than almost anyone else I knew. Then, one day, I was shooting for National Geographic on the outskirts of Juarez, one of the most dangerous cities in Mexico, and I think in 2010 was considered the most dangerous city in the world. We were setting up for an interview with a group of assassins connected to one of the larger cartels operating in the area when a group of six or so gunmen snuck over the backyard fence and opened fire into the house. I'm gonna leave out the most graphic details, but it's enough to say that half of the seven people I was with were hit right away. I dove for cover behind a concrete wall in the kitchen and lay there in a little ball for what seemed like an eternity. It was probably more like 30 seconds. And in that time, a bunch of things became really clear to me in a way that I'd never experienced before. It wasn't a near-death experience in the way of seeing my life flash before my eyes or anything like that, but more like finally noticing some things about work and life clearly for the first time. And they hit me all at once in a fraction of a second. And those are what I wanted to share with you today because I don't want anyone else to have to learn them in the same way that I did. As I lay there on that dirty old linoleum floor and literally watched blood pump out of a hole in my director's leg, the first thing I remember thinking was, well, this wasn't worth it. If I'm being totally honest, the show we were working on, even though it was really about intense subject matter, was probably not gonna be all that good. I'm not saying that it was bad or anything like that, more like we all sort of knew it was the kind of thing that would play a few times on a Sunday afternoon, but probably wouldn't make much of an impact on the world. And when I thought I was gonna die, I didn't want it to be for something that didn't really matter. And that's the first lesson I wanna share when it comes to your own filmmaking careers. Try to really care about what you're making. Now, I know we all need money and we have to take all sorts of jobs over the course of our lives to get by. Not everything we shoot is gonna be super meaningful all the time, and that's okay. But even if you're not getting shot at, a career in filmmaking is gonna require a lot of sacrifices, and they're only worth it, in my opinion, if you care. That could be just a matter of investing time into personal projects or working with nonprofits that you think are doing important work, but try to find some way to do work that means something thing to you, otherwise the sacrifices might not be worth it. After the initial round of shooting stopped, I remember this weird calm where everything just went quiet in the room. Then suddenly we we're all up and running out the door and piling into the trunk of a car. There's a whole bunch to this story, but the short version is that I was eventually dropped off in front of a small medical clinic with my camera assistant and the director who still had a bullet in his leg and was going into shock. Now, I'm no combat medic or anything like that, but I have done a lot of first aid and hostile environment training, which is like war zone training for journalists if you've never heard of it. And so I knew enough to be able to slow down his blood loss until we could get to a hospital. I'm not saying I saved his life or anything heroic like that, but having some idea what to do in a crazy situation like that made me feel so much more in control and calm. 
And that's my next piece of advice. Get as much training as you can before you need it. First aid is always a good one, but you don't have to go and do battlefield medical courses like I did in order to make yourself a more versatile filmmaker. Learn to drive off road or get your scuba license or learn Spanish or teach yourself after effects. I feel like all the experiences and skills you have surrounding filmmaking end up shaping the course of your career almost as much as the camera skills do in the long run. Becoming a more well-rounded person in general, and I think you'll be surprised when those abilities pop up and save the day. I personally did the hostile environment training after one of my photojournalism icons, Tim Hetherington, was killed by a mortar in Libya, but I never really expected to need it. When I did need it though, I think you can probably imagine I was glad I had it. Anyways, when we finally made it to the hospital, we realized that some of the other people who'd been hurt in the shooting were in the room next door. Actually, the guy we'd been interviewing, who was in reality a cartel hitman, died in the middle of the night, and I will never forget the sound of his wife screaming through the curtains. Even though they were both criminals and had done some horrible things in their lives, they were still human beings with people in their lives they loved and who loved them back. Now that's a pretty heavy story, I know, but it demonstrates the next point I wanted to share, and that's how important empathy is for filmmakers. The people you film could easily be you in another life, and it was pure luck that my director survived and the man next door didn't. If you want to tell good stories about the lives of other people, you need to be able to put yourself in their shoes. After working with cartels for years, I know that I could have just as easily been sucked into that world if I'd been born poor on the outskirts of Juarez instead of in Toronto. And because of that, I tried to never judge the people I was filming. Now, of course, I didn't agree with a lot of the things they did, but that doesn't mean I didn't empathize with how they got where they were and how lucky I was by comparison. You might not be able to walk a mile in the shoes of everyone you film, but if you can at least try and empathize with what being in their shoes might feel like, I think you'll have a much better chance of connecting to the stories you're trying to tell. Speaking of being lucky, once the director had been stabilized and his leg was in a cast, I was able to call in some favors with, let's just call it an unnamed American government agency I had worked with on similar stories in the past, and an agent from said agency came out in the middle of the night and helped us cross the border into the US without having to deal with all the crazy questions from the border guards about what we were doing there. It wasn't until we actually got to the hospital in Texas that I realized that the rest of the crew, and I'm talking about our Mexican producer and camera assistant, hadn't been able to cross the border with us. In fact, they'd just been taken to a local hotel by police and told to stay there, which was not at all where they wanted to be considering what had just happened. Now, I'm not trying to make this video preachy or political at all, but that night reinforced to me how much of a real thing privilege is in this world, and I have never forgotten it. I had a Canadian passport instead of a Mexican one, so I was taken to safety and escorted back across the border the next day in an armored car. Initially, my Mexican crew were told they'd be taken to safety as well, but as soon as we'd cleared the border, they were told there was a change of plans and that they should just stay where they were. Crazy unfair, and it seriously pissed me off. But the lesson is an important one for all documentary filmmakers to keep in mind. Just to be able to even consider the idea of making our living by following our passions and telling stories makes us some of the luckiest people to ever have lived. So many people out there are caught in cycles of poverty or violence, and if you want to tell stories that matter and create meaningful changes, it's important to remember that. Acknowledging that privilege exists in this world will help you empathize better with your subjects, and it's gonna keep you going when things get hard. Because at the end of the day, if we get to live our lives as filmmakers, we're already doing great in this world. That night, after the director was admitted to the ICU, I got dropped off in a scummy motel on the outskirts of El Paso and told to wait till the morning. This place literally had one of those weird coin slot machines for vibrating the bed. So that should tell you all you need to know about it. I remember lying there on this lumpy mattress and being so surprised that this had actually happened to me. I'd been doing some really risky stuff for years by that point, from filming with cartels, to riding freight trains across Mexico with migrant caravans, to reporting on natural disasters and kidnappings, but somehow I thought none of it could ever impact me. Like somehow the camera and my status as a filmmaker protected me from the events where uh, bad things were happening in front of my lens. So when everything went wrong in an instant and I realized that I was very much not protected, my first reaction was surprise. Being a filmmaker doesn't make you invulnerable and even though it might seem like it's worth it to take any risk for the sake of your filmmaking career, it might not be worth it. Or you might care so much about the story and the people you're filming that you decide it is worth it and that's valid too. But the camera has a way of acting as a weird barrier between you and the real world and it's important to understand that it doesn't remove you from 
your story as much as it might seem. The next morning, I cleaned all the gunpowder off my camera gear and got on a flight back to my apartment in Mexico City. I was in a pretty weird daze, as you can probably imagine, but I remember the thing that got me through were all the messages of support and love from my colleagues. The shooting of a National Geographic reporter was pretty big news. It was written about in the LA Times and a few other big papers. So by the time I woke up, pretty much everyone in my social circle knew. All the support I got from those people is what kept me sane and calm during the week after. So it taught me what's probably the most important lesson of them all about filmmaking. Community matters. When I first started out as a photojournalist and later a filmmaker, I was struggling really hard to get those early jobs. Now I'm not proud of it, but I remember kind of feeling resentful when other people at my level got great gigs or scored some big success. I sometimes felt like, why didn't I get that job or win that award instead of them? And I found it pretty hard to be happy for them. It took me years to realize that this is totally the wrong way to look at things. Filmmaking is a team sport and without a thriving and supportive network, you're not gonna get very far. It isn't me versus the world, it's all of us together advancing the art of storytelling. What's good for your peers is also good for you, and the people you start with will be the big time professionals of the future one day down the road. Instead of competing with each other, help each other and everyone will rise up together. When things are good, you can pass each other jobs and share contacts. When things are bad, like when you almost die behind the Juarez airport, they'll let you sleep in their guest room and make you dinner. Without the community I built up around me, I am really not sure how I would have gotten through that period. So don't ignore that aspect of the industry on your rush to the top. Make friends, share information, information, help people with less experience than you, uh, reach out to people you admire. Strong communities last longer, and staying in the game is the only real way to make it. So in the end, that experience was a big time reality check, and I decided to call it quits on the narco stuff and come back to Canada where I am now. A lot of the work I do today is still fairly out there and extreme by most people's standards, but the hardcore violence of that world just wasn't worth it anymore for me, at least not as my full-time job. But even though that day sucked a lot, the insights I got into my own life and filmmaking career in that instant as I thought I was about to die were so powerful and impactful that I'm actually grateful it happened. If you could get wisdom like this in pill form, it would make billions. But unfortunately, for now, it still has to be learned the hard way. I guess I haven't really talked about much of that stuff on the channel before, but I hope that that story was interesting and that some of those lessons I learned help you think about your career in a different way. If you wanna hear more about that kind of work, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to share, uh, just cause I haven't talked about it. Uh, doesn't mean I'm not willing to, so let me know what you wanna see. If you have any stories or life lessons that you learned the hard way, also share those in the comments. I love the community aspect of YouTube and I wanna hear from you all. So thanks for watching as always. And if you liked that video and want more, you might also like this other one about how I got my first job shooting for National Geographic. See ya.